back to the GSMC Fantasy Sports Podcast. Now for these next two segments, this is going to be an interesting deep dive into how two teams and their fantasy stories kind of combine to create this confounding conundrum that can't be solved by many. So let's just start off with these two teams. They're the leaders in their respective finals, namely the Boston Celtics and the Florida Panthers. We will start off with the Boston Celtics. They are truly one of these teams that don't have a superstar like a Luka Doncic or a Nikola Jokic or even a Victor Wembanyama who can step up in terms of fantasy and be someone who is highly coveted on fantasy markets. And I think that kudos has to go to both of these GMs, namely Brad Stevens and Bill Zito, for kind of ignoring how people view fantasy sports and saying, hey, we want to build a team game in real life. And for people who view fantasy, it's up to them to want to pick players who might not value points over helping their team to an ultimate goal. And so I kind of admire that even though for you guys, it's just been kind of confusing because like, who am I going to pick if I want a Boston Celtic or Florida Panther on my team? So without further ado, let's jump right into the Boston Celtics because they are the more confusing team due to the fact that their players are just scattered all over the top 100 list. This is mainly based on the top 100 fantasy uh, players in both respective sports. I took the top five players from both teams and kind of dissected their whole fantasy story, their whole spiels. And so let's jump right into the Celtics. Obviously, Jason Tatum is your number one overall player, but he isn't even in the top 10. He's 14th overall as the overall fantasy player rankings go. And then, in your number two spot, he's kind of a surprising player, but I'm not necessarily that surprised due to the fact that he is a big man and big men are more valued in fantasy. Kristaps Porzingis is 15th overall for the Celtics. And then you have to go down a ways to find their next player in the top 100 with Derek White at 37th overall. That's kind of interesting that Derek White is that high because of the fact he is viewed more of a defensive-minded uh, kind of guard player rather than someone who can add offense. But still, I can see why people might covet Derek White. And then you have to go even lower to find Shu Holiday at 66 overall. And JB rounds out their top five players in the top 100 at 67th. Now, here's why this Celtics team is so befuddling in terms of fantasy. If you look at these kind of three important fantasy stats where you have usage rate, their player efficiency rating, and turnover margin, it really tells a very wild story of who the Celtics are as a team and as fantasy players. Let's start off with Jason Tatum. Surprisingly, Jason Tatum, no matter how scrutinized he is, is 16th in terms of usage rate in fantasy. That means people really, really think that Jason Tatum can help their team. They're using him a lot. Obviously not a top 10, top 5 production, but still that's pretty high for a player of Jason Tatum's caliber. But here's another interesting stat. In terms of turnover percentage, he is 261st. That is a fantastic thing to be. I think that Jason Tatum is one of those players who you really want to take a flyer on due to the fact that he can put up points. People know he can put up points, but is still one of those guys who's going to butt, people are going to butt heads over, debate about a lot, toss and turn their sleep at night because of the fact that Jason Tatum can really help you or he can really kind of be one of those players who stagnates in terms of points but then elevates the rest of his game we're seeing it in the nba finals as an example but still jason tatum being in there is not necessarily as surprising to me because he still is a big name kp on the other hand no matter being the 15th overall fantasy player right now he tells the story of who the boston celtics are and what people view of them Only 56th in usage rate, even though he is one of the better fantasy players overall. Obviously, he did not play as much. They wanted to rotate him in and out of their lineup. And that kind of goes to show that he is very injury prone and people might be a little worried about him. On the whole, as one of those players who you can't necessarily trust all the time to start 
or put on your bench as a utility player. So that kind of makes a little bit of sense, but still, for a player of his caliber and, and status in the, in the fantasy realm, it's kind of weird. He's still 15th in player efficiency ratings. That's very high for him. So you can see these kind of weird conflated stats between how these Boston Celtics really play. They have, they're very high up in certain categories, very low down in other categories. And the same rings true for a player in Derek White, who's one of probably one of the most intriguing players in the Boston Celtics in terms of fantasy. 105th in terms of player efficiency rating, 156th, 165th rather in terms of usage rate, and 229th in terms of uh, kind of one of those players who is the middle ground for the Celtics. Not necessarily high on anything very low in things, but still kind of you can see the mismatched balance in some of those rankings for him. And then Drew Holiday, obviously not necessarily the best of fantasy players in the regular season. It's not necessarily the case in the postseason as we've seen in the NBA Finals, really elevating his game in terms of point production and maintaining his defensive solidity as always. But he's only 172nd in player efficiency rating. 256th in usage rate, which is kind of surprising, and 80th in turnover percentage. So you, uh, still another player whose stats are very mismatched, very idiosyncratic player there. And then finally, JB is 56th in usage rate, 25th in player efficiency rating, and 240th. So that's also very weird. But the fact that your last player, in terms of overall fantasy rankings, is more valued than, say, a Jason Tatum. That, and that is the conundrum people have to solve about the Celtics. Do you want a player who is more coveted in the fantasy realm, who stats and pundits say are better at what they do in terms of fantasy, or do you want a guy who's used less, not necessarily viewed as a sexy fantasy pick, but still, in almost every stat, is very even and that kind of shows the difference between Jason Tatum and Jalen Brown. I think Jason Tatum is overhated, and I think that Jalen Brown is underrated. Meaning that Jason Tatum, he is one of those players who's obviously going to stir controversy because even though people want to call him a superstar, they can't because of the fact in these clutch situations, he's not necessarily doing what superstars often do. Whereas Jalen Brown... In terms of fantasy, he is viewed lesser than, but he's still one of the best players on the court for the Boston Celtics at any given time. That's reflected in how people view him in fantasy. So the question is, do you want a player who is, in many people's minds, just on the precipice of superstardom and just needs kind of whether it be a championship or an MVP to elevate him to that status and kind of be viewed differently, to be one of those fantasy players who you have to kind of put up with? Or do you want a guy who's being completely underestimated in terms of fantasy, but in terms of his usage rate and other stats, it's very high up on these lists. And so the Boston Celtics as a whole just a really really spaced out on the spectrum here you have guys who are their top who are more the top end of the overall fantasy list who are very low in certain stats and then guys who are very low down in the fantasy list like Jalen brown who are still very valued and i think that more has to do with how boston celtics play in the playoffs more than it has to do with what they did in the regular season i think these stats are a bit inflated for playoffs obviously not yet for drew holiday mainly because of the fact he's not necessarily in the regular season that highly coveted at all because of the fact the point there are better point guards out there. And so I just feel like the question of the Boston Celtics is, do you take balance over risk? Do you take a player who you're, who's gonna, you're, you're gonna sacrifice kind of your, your point stats for someone who is willing to be a system player? Are you going to take someone who's not valued in the fantasy realm, but 
people use a lot? That's kind of the question for me with the Boston Celtics. But that will just about do it for this segment of today's show. Coming up next, we transition from the Boston Celtics to the Florida Panthers, who are one of the most well-oiled fantasy machines in all of sports due to the fact that their team is just so well-built. We'll be right back with that segment. I really enjoy these two segments for you guys. I'm really excited to present this information because, to me, it's quite interesting to kind of dissect these teams. But we will be right back with the Florida Panthers deep dive right away. <laughs> 